everyone welcome to the triple threat comics youtube channel i'm your host ian miller tonight we're actually gonna have a very special guest he is the creator of the kickstarter comic sensation tragedy he is the owner of the legendary illustrations and he has his own youtube channel called creator con please welcome philip Rosarte. Hey, what's going on? <laughs> Sorry about the delay, folks. Uh, how you doing? Good. I think you give me too much credit when you say uh, tragedy's a uh, sensation, but uh, hopefully someday. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, let's begin. Uh, why don't you tell um, the audience who have not heard of this comic what it's about? Well, the short Netflix pitch would be if, and I don't know if you, you know, I'm too old in my generation, but if you took the Boondock Saints or John Wick, and you mixed it with Big mm -hmm. Trouble in Little China, uh, and then added in more, that would be just touching the surface of the book. But on a deeper level. It's about an Irish, a female Irish protagonist whose life was taken from her. She was groomed from a young age to be an assassin for the Irish Mafia branch in New York. While she's struggling with her own inner demons and leading a life that she doesn't want and doing things she doesn't want to please a man that she's never going to get his love and respect, which is causing this vicious cycle of her hating herself for it. She's fighting metahumans and cyborgs and uh, there's... There's magic and mysticism and there's martial arts and there's rival mafias. And uh, I mean, it's, it's really got a great blend of a lot of things and it, it works really well. And uh, I'm already, I've written 25 issues. So um, I'm excited to get this story out there to everybody. 25 issues. That's impressive. Yeah. And uh, uh, wow. Uh, yeah, yeah, please go on, go on. Uh, and I just, when I, when I wrote the book, I, you know, I'm the kind of person who does things when I don't like how something's done. I just decide to do it myself. I don't want to complain about it. So mm -hmm. I wanted to write a book that was just a fun story. There's, there's no, there's no politics. There's no preaching. There's no soapbox. There's none of that going on. Uh, and if that's what you're into, that's fine. It's just not what I wanted in a comic. So I, you know, I did it my way. And I also, yeah. you know, I created, I like when villains win because it only validates the hero. You're, if you're not tested, how do you, how can you triumph? How can we root for you when you're always winning? You know, they call it a Mary Sue. There's no Mary yeah. Sue's in my book. Um, she does not win every fight, but her strength is that she gets up and fights every day anyway, like we do. And I have the villains that you love to hate. And the villains that you hate to love. So uh, I, I think it's going pretty good. Hey, Sean. <laughs> okay, so um, how did you come up with the concept? How did you uh, decide to, this was the book I was going to write. How did you decide that? You're going to laugh at me, but I don't think I did. Um, what? What? I, well, the character just popped up in my head. Like the, the I, I was very sick, um, mm -hmm. actually life-threatening sick. And the character, the image just popped in my head one day. I don't know where it came from. It just popped in my head. And I was in bed for over six weeks, and I just, wow. I just said, well, I, I opened with, it opens with a big action sequence because I always love when movies do that. And I just, mm. I didn't know what I was going to do. I didn't know who the character was. I didn't know what her personality was. I didn't know anything. I didn't have any background characters, nothing. I sat down and I said, she's going to be in a warehouse fighting a bunch of thugs. Why? Who knows? So I just started writing and the story came out. It just came out on paper. Now I, you know, I, I don't push belief on anybody, but sometimes I think, you know, God was just helping me tap into some, some energy, something that was there, you know, buried inside me. Um, because I, I didn't do the traditional plot this out and do a, you know, a, do a, 
an outline or anything like that. I just sat down and for nine hours I wrote the entire book, and that's what we got. Wow! And you wrote this while you were yeah, still sick. Um, wow. Yeah, that's, I was in bed on oxygen, and and uh, I just, you know, I needed to to do something. I couldn't just I couldn't just sit there in bed. I yeah. um, I'm I'm perpetual motion as you probably see from everything I'm doing. Um, I, I, you know, as you get older, when you get to a certain age, you realize that the, the biggest commodity is not money. It's time because you don't get it back. Uh, I'm not afraid to fail. I'm not afraid to look foolish. The only thing I fear is growing old with regret and I'm not going to do that. Mm. Yeah, that's uh, something that uh, I think everyone shares. Uh, definitely, yeah, not taking the steps that you want to take, not um, taking the risks. That's the thing is, you know, I think most people, if not all, they can live with giving their best and it didn't work out because at least they know they tried, they did everything they could, it just wasn't meant to be. But when you wonder, what if I did try, would I have made it? Would I have had the life I wanted? Um, that's torture. And the problem is, you'll never know because it's too late. You didn't try and you can't go back. You know? So I, I don't want to do that. So I'm living life as best as I can right now, balancing between my family, my three-day jobs, and all that I do in the comic world. Wow, that's, that's impressive. Um, I actually want to show um, one of the covers of Tragedy for a second, just to show everyone what we're talking about for those who haven't seen the comic. So let me just get that up in a second. Hold on. I'm sorry if you hear stuff in the background. My family's in the living room watching Adventures in Babysitting. That's all right. It's all right. Ah, uh, that's a great cover. Uh, yeah, who did this cover? Favorites. So that's uh, a friend of mine, Chance Wolf, who inked Spawn and some of the image titles in the '90s, and he said he was inspired wow. by the character design, so he just drew her. He did everything, the the line art and the colors, and he sent it to me, and he wouldn't take money. I fought with him. He wouldn't take money. He just gave me this cover. I mean, this is a, an image professional in comics, and he's a hell of a sweet guy and, and a great guy and a friend. And and uh, I was flattered that he felt inspired to draw when he saw the character, which I've been hearing a lot. And being that I'm a nobody in the industry, it, it is really flattering, and it is really humbling, and it's inspiring to me that so many people like the aesthetics of the character and they want to draw her. Uh, so thank you to everybody that, that does that. Well, it's a, it's a, it's a great design, you know, I, I can not. You know, and I think, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Go on. Go on. Sorry. I, 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 I I create and design all my characters. I can't draw worth a damn, but I, I, I think I do okay at uh, character design. But I was very pleasantly and gratefully surprised by how much people are really digging her design and Breath of the Dragon as well. Hmm. Yes, and uh, Breath of the Dragon is one of the villains, right? I wouldn't call him a villain. I would say that he's an adversary in the first, uh, for, you know, the first, you know, for a while. He's an adversary, but he's not a villain. Yeah. And I just, I like to layer things in the sense that in real life, it's not as cut and dry as one person's good, one person's bad. Circumstance sometimes just pits two people against each other, and for whatever reason, you don't get along or something happens and and you know a breath of the dragon actually has his own journey in this book as well wow that's definitely interesting having both the um the hero and the adversary going on their own 
you know, separate journeys and then sort of converging together. Very compelling. I've been told, and this is one of the most flattering uh, compliments I've gotten. Someone said it was their indie, their favorite indie book, and one of the reasons is because they're just as invested. Like every character is not, there's no wasted characters. I don't do throwaway characters. Everybody is somebody in this book, and mm -hmm. I develop them. And that they said that they they feel invested and like all the characters, and at the same time, they're usually good at guessing what's going to happen in a book, and they don't guess what's happening in mine. And that really flatters me because. Uh, I love trying to catch you out at a left field, you know? Well, yeah, I think as uh, writers, we definitely try to do that. We want to keep the readers on their edge of their toes. I, I certainly do that, you know, when I'm writing my own series. Just try to say, okay, how do I, you know, change things? How do I make sure the audience think it's one thing, but it's actually another? Right. So I'm actually glad that you're doing that. And that's the thing. I just I just sit yeah, down and I, I write off the top of my head. I don't – I mean, I'll get ideas that will be, you know, 10 issues down the road that I'll just jot down to remember that idea. But when I go into an issue, I just sit down and write it. It'll take anywhere from three to eight or nine hours, but I'll just sit down and write it. Wow. Again, this is very impressive stuff, guys. Very impressive. Um, okay, so you've had two, uh, three successful uh, Kickstarters uh, for the series, which is pretty much the first three issues. Uh, you have a fourth uh, Kickstarter coming up for issue four, right? Yes, a week from this coming Tuesday, which is the 16th of August, 8 p.m., I'll have a live launch party, uh, chapter oh. four. The book is, is just being colored and lettered, but it's all drawn, it's all inked, it's all done. Um, it is 28 pages or 30 pages of, uh, of uh, full color comic. And uh, yeah, it launches on uh, April, I mean, August 16th. And then book five will be in November. And then I'm going to do a collected trade at the beginning of 2023. That is a lot of work. Yeah, That's but you know what? Work. It's but worth I'm it. I'm glad you have the passion to do it. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Oh, you know what? I should have wore your triple yeah, threat okay. shirt. Uh, not, it's all right. It's all right. Actually, I want to make a shout out. When I mentioned how I was sick and I was I was not doing well uh, in 2020. You mailed me that shirt and your books uh, when I was in bed. And... Uh, that was very kind of you. And it's a really cool shirt and the book was a lot of fun. Uh, so, you know, just if anybody doesn't realize that's the kind of guy that Ian is um, when I was sick in bed uh, and we didn't know what was going on with my health. He, uh, he sent that to me. So thank you. Uh, uh, you're welcome. You're welcome. Um, it's very nice. Uh, you know, I definitely do care about uh, everybody in the community, you know, the indie community and they've given me a lot and I definitely want to, saying the back to hopefully pretty much everybody but yeah so it, it does hurt it does hurt me a bit when one of us is in trouble or you know going through problems it does hurt me emotionally well you know it's little things like that that boost your day when you're stuck in the bed and uh you know you're you're not well and you're tired and you're, you're out of it. Uh, it. You know, when you get like mail calls, I like guess pretty cool. Unfortunately, my wife had to kind of chuck it onto the bed from the, from like 12 feet away from the doorway. But, um, uh -huh. well, cause you know, we didn't want her coming in and, and getting, you know, I had COVID pneumonia, uh, blood clots, yeah. uh, everything. So, Hey, Robert Jim Corelli is here. What's going on? Crazy man. <laughs> Okay, so you've got those uh, two uh, issues coming up. Definitely the fifth one, November. Uh, but I've also been hearing that you're working on another book. Yeah, it's uh, it's called The Dynamics, and it is basically my family 
um, sort of like, you know, we changed names and stuff. It's based on my family's personalities uh, with superpowers. And um, oh. no, it is not an incredible knockoff by any means. It's, it's actually totally different. Uh, the first two scripts are written. Uh, we have an anthology called Unknown Heroes coming out in October. And there's seven of us creators doing 10 page mm. previews of our books. And you will see the debut, a 10 page preview debut of the dynamics in that anthology called Unknown Heroes in October. Um, I have it. The 10 pages are complete. Mm. They're here. Rob Powers did everything. I wrote it. I created it. I gave him the character references, which is easy. It's pictures of my family. But um, he he drew it, inked it, colored it, and lettered it. That's amazing. That's amazing. And it's also amazing that you put real people in the com in your comic, real to you, you know, because it keeps, you know, everything grounded. I can, I should have sent you the pages, actually. I can actually send you if you want to share them and show you. Uh, if I mean, if you don't want to, it's fine. I'm not trying yeah. to. I um no, 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 it's, it's fine. You can share it. You can share it. Now this book is more lighthearted and fun. Uh it's not as dark and serious as mm -hmm. um as what do you call it? As uh tragedy because you know I wanted something a little more family friendly, but it is in the tragedy world. And there will be some tie in. Whoa. Yeah. I don't have the dialogue here. Why not? I'll just show you a little of the art style. Um, okay. For know. those of you who don't know, my, my eight-year-old daughter, Kaylee, is she's very feisty. She's a sweet, loving girl, but she's very feisty, and she's very tough, and she takes no crap. And we, you know, we have fun with that in the book. She's super strong in the book. Um. Uh, my other daughter, Melanie, is a very, very thoughtful, intelligent. Um, she she thinks things through. She observes. And she uh, is in this, and she runs really fast. And then there's my wife, my mother, and myself. My, nice. my mother is uh, 72 years old, and in the book, she's an excellent hand-to-hand -hand fighter, and she can find the weakness in anything. <laughs> So we have fun. It, it's fun. And reviews of the script have been very good. Uh, people have thought it was funny and it was interesting and it was fun. So we'll see. You know, we'll launch it and uh, fingers crossed that it does well and uh, we go from there. Wow, that's fantastic. Um, I, I'm curious. Uh, when you told uh, your family that you wanted them in, in the comic, their, their personalities, what were their reactions? Well, the kids were, were excited. They were happy. My wife thought it was cute. Uh, my mother thinks it's fun, you know, I mean, to, to be in the comic and the way I portray her. Um, again, this is more lighthearted than tragedy. So I wanted to go with a nice, uh, more cartoony uh, style of art. And Rob Powers was the first person that came to mind. I thought it was a great idea. Um, so that foot, which you're going to see on, I think, the mm -hmm. next page I send you, is from a character called Hulk Apotamus. Yeah. Now, Kaylee, my <laughs> eight-year-old, when she was five, when she was five, she came up with a bunch of characters, Hulkapotamus being one of them. So mm -hmm. I won't give it away how Hulkapotamus gets into the comic, but I put him in the comic. And if you look at the next page, uh, he's I'm going to fight out. Kaylee and Melanie. They have different names in the book. And, you know... Just because you're super strong at eight doesn't mean you know how to fight. So I try to yeah. keep it grounded in that sense. Um, oh, that's the page before or after. Might be, oh, it's after. So I, I have the lettered pages, but I didn't show them because it would yeah. be the PDF. But that, obviously the whole compotamus is coming. They're all running. You know, my kids are like, you know, like, oh, my God, is that your character that you made up? And, like, how is it real? How is it alive? And then they uh, <laughs> they fight it. And there's a, a really awesome page where Kaylee is, um, you know what, I can share this one last one to you if that's okay. 
That's all right. That's all right. Copy image. Um, and I put this up in a post with um, with a uh, Mark Twain uh, quote that says, it's not the size of the dog in the fight, but the size of the fight in the dog. And this page I just sent you epitomizes oh, wow. my eight-year-old perfectly. And I love this page. <laughs> All right, let me just get it up. Give me a second. Robert, what about a fat Italian friend from Staten Island who snores? Yeah, I'll put you in a book. Your power could be snoring. And because I'm a big mouth, ah, my power is in the book. Boy. Oh, there's Steph Wilson. Um, yeah, my powers in the book are like Banshee. I'm a big mouth, so I made myself a big mouth in the book. <laughs> Oh boy! Oh boy! You know it's a little poking that, fun be at ourselves. To see. What's that? Yeah, that'd be interesting to see. You know, uh, he was a character. That'd be interesting to see. Yeah, you know, it's poking fun a little bit at myself, and 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 uh, you know, tapping into who we are as people in, in the in the book. Uh, and it's called the dynamics because mm -hmm. it's basically family dynamics along with dynamic powers. So it just it Clever. just made sense. Okay, here's the uh, page. Yeah, it's just that shows her. I mean, look at the size of it compared to her, and she's there standing in front of it. Again, she's super strong and invulnerable in this eight-year-old little girl's body, and uh, her wow. feisty attitude. And it's just fun. And this this is where the preview ends, but it continues. You know, the full story book is going to have a whole big third act fight. Uh, yeah. from here on. So uh, I'm excited about the anthology uh, and the other creators. And I'm ex and Rob Powers is going to have his book, Cataclysm, in it. And Rod Ramos will have his book. Jason Meadows will have his book. So it's going to be a, like a, about an 80-page compilation of different superhero tales uh, to whet your appetite to hopefully pursue these, these books. Um, Steph Wilson knows my family. He's met them. Uh, and he probably knows how feisty she is. I haven't had a live stream in a while, bud. <laughs> See the love I get? Yeah. But, uh, oh, crap. The wind just blew that thing down. Hang on. Good stuff you're getting here, folks. Sorry, it almost, it almost landed on the glass. My family is way cooler than me, and that's why I made a book about them. <laughs> okay, so, um, yeah. Uh, do you have a um, – is this an ongoing series after the anthology series? Okay. Yes. All right, so you have, have you mapped this out yet, or are you still just go, uh, pretty much writing as you go along? Um, I, I have issue two written and I write as I go along, but I did, um, come up with some kind of character ideas and powers and, and, you know, a, a very loose idea of where we're going with this. Um, but until mm -hmm. I sit down and start writing, I don't have a, you know, set what's going to go on. I just go by the seat of my pants. the fun understandable <laughs> um yeah it is the fun it's definitely the fun of writing these things you know it's, it's creating new worlds <laughs> stuff that i just okay wrote so um <laughs> oh god i'm gonna probably have the guinness book of world records for most scripts written Hunter that far ahead yeah it's probably gonna. I'm probably gonna have the Guinness Book of World <laughs> Records for most scripts written that nobody ever saw. Crazy, crazy. Now you've actually been doing a lot of traveling for a tragedy. You went to San Diego, as I understand it. Yes, uh, I did seven shows in nine weeks. It would have been each. It would have been ten shows in twelve weeks, but I just I couldn't take off from work. Um, San Diego, I was, um, 
I was invited as a guest on a panel for a crossover uh, that I'm doing with Breath of the Dragon and Apex Comics with Mariano Nicieza. Uh, that's um, Fabian Nicieza's brother, um, you know, who created, helped co-create mm-hmm. Deadpool. Mariano r- wrote for DC and Marvel, I believe, and he has his Apex Comics and he works for Dynamite Comics. And he and I, which we were on the phone uh, for about an hour and a half today, we're co-writing a crossover book with Breath of the Dragon and a character of his. And um, so I was invited on a panel at, as a guest at San Diego Comic-Con, which I did, and it was a lot of fun. And then uh, I enjoyed the show, you know, networking and going around and talking to people. I had a few big face-to-faces that I hope pan out to be something. Yeah. But that's a grim old. But seven shows? Good God, man. How, how are you not? A, you must be exhausted. I am. And I haven't been able to catch up because as soon as I got home, I was working the next day. After a 22 hour travel day from San Diego, I was right back to work the next morning, a full day. And then I worked another day. And then I was driving to Connecticut three hours to Terrific Con there for three days. And then I drove home. And uh, Sunday night, and went straight back to work that morning. So I haven't really, I mean, I know conventions are fun, but there's still work. So I haven't really had a day off in nine weeks. I am very surprised that you actually came on the show because you, you had to be exhausted. Yeah, just to, uh, I couldn't well, do it, that. I, I couldn't do that. Well, it's like I said before. Um, I'm hungry as hell. I I finally found what I want to do for my career with my life. I have everything else. My family, I'm blessed with them. I have a home in a good neighborhood, and, and I, I've got a great job, a great salary, but my job doesn't fulfill me anymore, and comics has always been in my life, uh, and I know what I want, and I'm going to be 50 in October, and I'm not wasting another moment anymore. My time is spent with my family, working on the comics, and then working to provide for them. And I'm hungry. I'm starving. Go ahead with the fat jokes. Um, And I'm more motivated (laughs) than anybody you'll ever meet. Uh, There is no tomorrow. It's like that Van Halen song, Right Now. You have right now. Mm -hmm. You're not guaranteed 10 minutes from now. I'm guaranteed right now. Yeah, this is definitely uh, true, folks, um, especially for you up-and-coming uh, comic creators. You definitely have to be uh, hungry for this type of business because it will eat you alive. And it's not easy. If, no, and if you do have that passion to drive you, use it, all right? Use it. Yeah, I just, you know... You always hear people say, if I knew then when I was younger and I had the energy, what I knew now, what I could accomplish. And that's true, but I never look back like that. I think events in your life happen the way they're supposed to unfold and lead you to where you have to go. And, you know, that's how I believe. I'm not saying you have to believe that. Um, And I think that everything has come full circle to where I am now. And I am this close to having what I would consider the perfect life. I love my wife. I love my children. I love my family. I have good, great friends. I've met great friends, you know, Robert, Steph, and Charles, and Greg, and, and you, and a lot of great people. And my health is better than ever. I've lost a lot of weight. I'm continuing to lose weight. Uh, so, uh, so it's really just being able to wake up to the job that I want to do every day. And that's the last thing. I don't need to be rich. I don't need to be famous but if i can get up and create comics for a living um i have everything i mean everything and i'm gonna fight for that if it's the last thing i do hey it's the passion it's always the passion but this is good you know because you reach a point where you, again you're taking risks that's another thing uh, about the business you need to take risks. And whether you feel not, at least you tried. You know, and that's the thing is um, 
my wife admires and uh, respects my fearlessness, but it can also be very stressful for her. You know, she's putting a lot of faith in me to to accomplish what I what I'm setting out to do. You know, she's she's there through the tough times and the, and the and the easy times and and or just the struggling, frustrating times or when we're pinching pennies, which. Seven shows in nine weeks. I wasn't working as much. We were pinching pennies. It's a lot to live in Long Island. And, uh, mm. you know, while, like I said, it's a double-edged sword. While she admires my 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 gumption and my passion and my, my fearlessness, it scares the hell out of her, too, you know? So I have to give her credit. Hey, yeah, you have to have the right people that's going to back you, you know, um, because it's good to have the passion, but you need to have, you know, people in your corner to especially encourage you to say, hey, you can do this. But yeah, it, it's not easy on them. It's not easy on them. Yeah. And, you know, part of why I do it, obviously, the selfish reasons of it's what I want to do and I love to do it. I, I want to show my daughters the, the main reason, believe it or not is I want to show my daughters that they can have the life they want if they just reach out and grab it. Go work for it and go grab it. No excuses. It's not somebody else's fault. Focus on you. Don't worry about the haters. Just do what you got to do. And um, I want to teach them that because, you know, we have the sayings on the wall about dream big, princess. Don't dream big. Be big. Do big. Go be big. You know? And the other reason is I want my wife to be able to not have to work and I want her to enjoy her life. You know, I mean, isn't that my job to, to provide? So. Yeah. Yeah, it is. And don't get me wrong. There's a lot of people just like me busting their butt, working hard at what they love. I'm no, you know, I'm not more special or different than, than those people. Um, but I do pride myself on uh, being willing to sacrifice a great deal for myself. You know, I'll bleed for this if I have to. That's a bit of exaggeration, but okay, we'll go with that. <laughs> it's not exaggeration. <laughs> no, 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 no. You ready? No, I'll go get the uh, razor. No, this is good. No, 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 not, not in front of the audience, please. Good Lord. <laughs> no, no, Listen, but I get, I get, I do. You, you would know how much I bleed by the fact that I shared a room with Robert Gencarelli. He snores like a wildebeest. No sleep. Anyway. <laughs> Sorry, Robert. Sorry. <laughs> Well, well, um, no, so, uh, you, you've done seven shows, um, in nine weeks. Uh, what's next for you show wise? I will be at Las Ve amazing Las Vegas, uh, September 16th through 18th. I will be at New York comic con at what capacity. I'm not sure yet. Um, I'm definitely at the show, but I don't mm -hmm. know. I might be vending up on the floor. Um, and then I'm going to be doing Baltimore Comic Con. I have two tables there, and uh, that'll that'll close out the year. Wow. Yeah, I really have to get back to the conventions because I'm missing out on all the fun. I, I have to get back. I do love it. I mean, it's a lot of work pushing your 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 book to people that don't know it exists or or may not care mm. until you make them care. You know, it's work, and there's rejection yeah. involved, and there's you know, those people that are rude, they just walk past and ignore you. You're like, nah, you know, mess, you know, F off. You know, you, so you deal with a lot emotionally. Um, but that just fuels me even more, you know. And I have a Kickstarter every month for the rest of the year uh, on some capacity. I have Tragedy 4 in August. I have the team up with Apex Comics in September. I have a Kickstarter for Legendary Illustrations art books in September, which I, uh, I'm excited about. Then I have the Anthology series in October. I have Tragedy 5 in November, and I have the Dynamics in December. 
And then uh, going into the new year in February, I have the trade collected trade of tragedy. And on the back of that is going to be a manga version of tragedy uh, book one. So I have other plans too, that I can't announce right now. Well, yeah, because you got to keep some stuff back for yourself. You want to give them a surprise. So yeah, I understand that. <laughs> yeah. I'm also working on a couple of projects myself that I can't really talk about either, which uh, I'm very excited about. Very cool. Yeah. But that's the that's the business. We have to keep secrets from each other. <laughs> <laughs> well, teasing yeah, so, is a good form of marketing. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, it sounds like you've got a full uh, plate uh, already from now to uh, to the end of the year. So that, that that's great. Yeah, and that I mean, obviously, more things will be developing. I have other titles I want to put into development. I just haven't had the money yet. Um, I want to grow Philbo Studio, you know, Philbo Entertainment Promotions. I want to, I want to grow it as a publishing company as well. So, and we're doing a lot with, uh, with the artists that I represent. So. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of which, let's actually talk about legendary illustrations for a second. Um, when did you form that and what was your, what, what's your goal? So November 2019, right before I got really sick, actually like a mm -hmm. month and a half before I got really sick, I um, oh. I decided I was going to be an art rep because uh, I just, I don't know, I love the world. I want to be around it. I didn't like the way some things were going with some art reps. There's some really good ones out there, and some of them I just, I didn't like it, uh, what they're doing. Um, I'm mm -hmm. friends with some bigger names in the industry that I could have, jumped on the easy bandwagon and made a name for myself off of their backs. I didn't want to do that. So I, I started repping hungry up and coming indie artists that don't have a lot of recognition, but deserve it because I wanted to build them up, help build them up while well, they build themselves, of course. Um, and, uh, yes, I have a, I have a great team of artists. Um, I think I'm at like 11. I keep it around 11 because I don't want it to get too big in this competition within ourselves. Um, you know, Kenny Calderon and Bill Lutz and um, Rod Ramos and Robert Powers and Will Playden and Ricardo Silva and Alex Arabia. Um, and I have a letterer and uh, writer, creator, Jason Meadows. So we have a great group of guys. Um, it's a great pleasure working with them. Uh, I get them, you know, I try to get them work, obviously, with uh, independent books. And, and a lot of them are, are working on jobs right now. I get them cover work, sequential mm -hmm. work. Uh, we do commissions, art sales. I'm actually going to uh, just had an art sale with Clan McDonald from Terrificon. We're probably going to do something again. Uh, we do. I'm going to be getting on whatnot. I do my own live art sales and streams. We do a live stream where we draw every week when I'm not away. Uh, so we'll do something next week. Uh, and we're just having fun and trying to, you know, make them money and grow their following. And uh, they're really great people. You know, unfortunately, as an art rep, sometimes you you do a lot for artists and you kind of get stabbed in the back. And that happens sometimes. And uh, that happened to me. But you move forward and you, you know, I we, we cleaned house of the bad attitudes and the egos and, and the people that, uh, think they're above everything and we have a wonderful group of, of guys that uh, they're humble they're hungry and they're talented and they're very professional well that, that's good to hear that uh, you got the best talent there you know it, it always uh, helps you know working with the best um, I definitely am fortunate with working with the best on all my projects if I'm being honest you know talented people so that that helps that helps you you know you know deliver a good product yeah because i mean i can only do so much it's their art that's really going to sell them you know i can i can try everything i can but if the art's just not there it's just not there but they're very talented um i mean will Playden and ricardo and alex and kenny and they're just bill they're just all rod i mean just amazing 
Um, and, you know, I love their art. It's hard not to buy everything myself. Um, I guess it's a good thing I'm broke. If I had money, I would be buying it all. Um, but they're just, they're hungry and they're humble and, and they're really talented. And, um, you know, we're here. We have an entire team for somebody's book. If they need to hire for anybody, you're a writer and creator and you need a team to make your book come to life, uh, we're available. We even have logo design. Um you know, trade dressing for books, we, you know, sequentials, inking, penciling, coloring, lettering, editing, writing, you know, we have, we have everything. It's one-stop shop and we always make deadlines. We never commit to something we can't commit to. We're very professional and we care about every project we do. Every project we do is as if it's ours because you know, it's our reputation, it's our stamp on there, and we want you to be proud of what you're putting out there and spending your money on, so. Well, sounds like a great, sounds like a great deal. Sounds like a great deal. Um, yeah, so you said uh, you definitely are interested in creating more titles. Now, would this also be in the tragedy universe or would that be something else? Well, there are some one shots of characters that come out of tragedy that I want to do. Uh, I want to do a mm. mini series of breath of the dragon, uh, which may lead to a, a regular series. Dynamics takes place in the tragedy world, even though they don't interact really, there'll be like nods to being in the same world. And there is a crossover down the road, um, but that's way down the road. But then I have other stories that I want to tell. Um, I, I won't get into them now, but I, I'm always big into psychology and, and you know, ethics and integrity and why people do the things they do and how they react. And a lot of my tales uh, delve into that stuff, you know. I mean, like for me, Superman's greatest power is his discipline. I mean, imagine you could do whatever you want, and yet you still abide by the rules. You still go by societal rules when you could, you could dictate what those rules are, and everybody would have to bow to you. That takes a great amount of strength yeah. and discipline, um, you know. And I have a tale of a of a, a person that gets bestowed powers, and it's a, really a tale about. You know, do you do you do the right thing because of your conscience or fear of consequence? And if it's fear mm. of consequence, what happens when you remove that fear of consequence because you're so powerful, nothing can bother you? And I delve into that in one book. Uh, I have another superhero team, but it's it's a little different detail. Um, it's a team that actually fails, and an, a planet dies. A planet is destroyed. They don't beat the big bad guy and they come to earth and they're struggling with that. They're struggling with the fact that they failed and billions are dead and now they're on earth. And do they pick up the pieces and protect earth or do they, or are they becoming scared, weak, lazy, lost themselves? Um, and then I have my short story book, uh, which is not a comic. It's a prose book that um, is almost ready to go. It's a short stories of theological fiction. And one of the stories in there, Withered, I'm actually going to adapt uh, a follow-up to the prose story in a five-issue, maybe more, comic book series that delves into uh, what's touched upon in that story. So that's what I have going on for me. Uh, eventually I'd love to grow the publishing company to where I can take on other indie comics that want to do ongoing series, want to go on a monthly into comic book stores and try to help people get that chance because the publishers right now, they're not really giving the little guy a chance. They will want the big names so that they can push their publisher, uh, you know, their publishing company. And the ones that will take on little guys like Scout and, and uh, Source Point Press, they won't take on ongoing series. Um, they'll only take on, you know, you do, you know, a trade paperback and they put it out. And I want to try to, and that's for cost effectiveness, I'm sure. I want to break that wall and that barrier if I can afford to, uh, because it's a business at the end of the day. 
and be able to pick up those titles and try to get you your monthly in comics and try to, you know, help you sell. Um, mm. You know, obviously there's a lot of structure to put in place, a lot of money to go over. Uh, I have to have capital. I have to grow my publishing company. So there's a lot to do before I can get there. So this isn't something that's going to happen within the next year. But life is a, a 15 round boxing match. This is the 60s. This isn't today. It's a 15 round boxing match. And I'm only in the first minute of round one. So mm. stick around. Yeah, it's going to be a tough fight. It's going to be a long fight. But uh, at the end, you know, you got to see if you're left standing. Oh, I will be. It's a matter of who's going to be standing in my corner with Very, me. Good confidence. Good confidence. Oh, I know I will be. There's nothing yeah. life can throw at me that I can't overcome. Huh? That's good. That's good. I hope you don't mind the uh, <clears throat> stiff competition from yours truly. <laughs> I don't see you as competition. We can all build together. We can all help each other. We can all... There's enough people in the world to enjoy enough stories. I mean, I never understood. I feel when people are threatened by another creator, then maybe they don't have the confidence mm. in their own product. Because you know what? No matter what you do or how great you are, if what I'm doing is good enough, it'll be good enough. It'll make it. So you're not a threat to me. You're not a fear to me. You're my ally. You're my friend. You're my you're the fellow person. We can all build an entire city together if we all stand together instead of worrying about our little hut or our little building, you know? And even better is if we stop trying to set fire to your neighbor so that you can have a house and they can't, we have to stop that crap. I don't understand the hate. I don't understand the jealousy and the pettiness. I don't get it. You know, we're here. There's enough. There's... 340 legal citizens in this country, 370 million people total. You don't think that's enough people for us all to share? <laughs> I mean, come on. No, you got a point. You got a point. You got a point. I'm glad you don't see me as a threat. I'm glad. I'm glad you see me as a threat. Ah. Yeah, here's my <laughs> eight-year-old that you saw on that page. Come, real quick, say hi because they're going to bed. That's my Kaylee bear. Hi. She's my feisty Hi. little one. She's the one who <laughs> created Hulkapotamus and fights him. Stands up to him. <laughs> Good night. I love you. Sleep well, sweet dreams. God bless. And here's my super fast, thoughtful, intelligent, thinking older daughter. Come say goodnight. Sweetie, come say goodnight. <laughs> She's playing shy. Good night. I love you. Sleep well, sweet dreams. God bless. Sorry about that. It's all right. It's all right. That's all right. Nice, right? Yeah, but uh, yeah, you're definitely right about the uh, the bigger companies not really looking out for the indie guys, you know, and and this, this is the thing. I've said this in other episodes that the readers and the audience they're gearing towards you know indie titles more because they want originality, they want different types Sorry of stories. For the train. Anyway. Yeah, I, I think so. I think so too. I think people are hungry for something new and interesting, but at the same time, there is a large contingency of people that still like the same regurgitated crap, and we have to help them see that there's more out there, there's better out there. But yeah. if people don't invest money into the indie scene, how are we going to be able to give you better products? If you want professional looking comic books, art, writing, editing, we need money to do that. Comics are expensive. So if you could, if you enjoy comics and you want to support, pick one indie comic a week that maybe you forego that cup of coffee or that McDonald's breakfast and just go pledge on their campaign. And if you don't like it, you don't go back to it. But what if you do? What if it's your new favorite book? What if you really love this? And if you really love an indie book, go tell the comic stores they need to pick it up and order it. You can help in so many ways. We can help each other. It doesn't have to be this struggle alone. I mean, don't we all just want to feel relevant? Don't we all want to lead lives that make us feel fulfilled? 
Aren't we tired of working jobs that are sucking the soul out of us? Feeling like there's no sense to this life? We're all seeking the same things. We may go about it a different way. We may act differently in how we respond to it. But don't we all want the same thing at the end of the day? So why can't we just put all our petty nonsense aside and let's just do it. Let's help each other get there. We all want the same thing. You know, and I'm sorry to sound preachy, but it just frustrates me when that happens. As far as the big publishers, no, they're not supporting the small guys. But I understand they're struggling, too, to try to be relevant. And money is, you know, everything's expensive. So I get it. But I don't get mad at that. I get fueled and motivated. You can spend your life getting depressed and beating yourself down and thinking you're not going to do it. But you can get the hell up. Stop crying, get angry, get motivated, get inspired, and go do something. Do something about it. Your life, you're not stuck in vain. Your life can change. Go do it. Do it now. There is no tomorrow. Isn't that what uh, um, in Rocky 3, he goes, there is no tomorrow. There is no tomorrow. Yeah, exactly. There isn't. Exactly. Exactly. And... Yeah, you definitely watched my show for a while now. You, you pretty much know the, how I support the con creators and also how I give you know, inspiration. You know, something. hopefully I'm inspiring somebody. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing, too, is if you look at somebody who's doing something and you wish you were where they are, I understand that natural instinct of feeling envious or jealous. Some people feel envious, but they're still happy for that person. Some people get je jealous and envious. And they get petty and spiteful to that person. I don't understand that, but that's the way it is. How about a third option? Don't be jealous or envious. Get inspired. Reach out to that person or observe them closely. See what they did to make themselves get to where they wanted to. You can learn from them and you can do it yourself. Right? I mean, why waste time on jealousy and pettiness when you can use it as a learning experience and get inspired. I mean, who doesn't want to be inspired in this life? Who doesn't love watching Rocky and feeling inspired and, and, and passionate about him, the underdog taking the punches and, and going the distance? I mean, it's the it's it's American pop culture, right? That's tapping into what we yeah. all feel. No, you're def no, you're right. You're right. You're, you're definitely right. And we need to be inspired more. We really do. Well, I think we need to to try to inspire each other, you know? I mean, I get inspired by people all the time. I see people fighting a good fight while they work their day job trying to make their books, and they make quality books and promoting hard. I, I see people inspire me by being good fathers or husbands or mothers or sisters or you know, you can find inspiration in so many places on so many levels if you're looking for it, but you have to be in tune to looking for it. You know, we're in a, we're in a, we're in a dark time right now. Life is a bit negative, you know, it, it, and it's reflecting in our pop culture. It's reflecting in society. We, you can't really bring up a topic without someone trolling and making it an angry situation. Sadly, we're an angry society right now. Isn't that all the more reason to try to shine a light and, and inspire and bring positivity? I mean, I get sucked into it sometimes. I got some people that do some bad sh stuff and I call them out and I get angry. But then I move on. They don't stop me. They don't lo make me lose my focus. I don't dwell on them. I have that moment where I vent, I let it out, or I let everybody know what they are, and then I move on. Um, because, you know, I'm not going to be a doormat either. They're not going to steal my energy but I'm also going to make it clear they've crossed the line, you know, but yeah, yeah. Uh, Facebook user, my book is an underdog story. I want to inspire. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. We need more stories like that. Remember when we cheered in the theaters watching Rocky in the eighties and the seventies? I mean, we cheered, we, we clapped, we were happy. Even just not too long ago, the Avengers, when Captain America catches the hammer, people went nuts. They were like, yes. I mean, don't we want that? You know, I like I like the dark, edgy stuff. Tragedy can be dark and edgy, but I like a mix too. I like positivity. I like my Superman humble and happy. 
I don't, he doesn't need to be angry and brooding with laser eyes all the damn time. Uh, we've had this conversation once before, especially about that. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, yeah, I, I had a lot of humor in my own comic in particular because I like it because it, it gives a good balance between the serious and, you know, yeah. Oh, there we go. I lost. Don't know what happened there. I know I lost you. There you go. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, definitely. I also try to put more of myself in in my writing, which is something I've uh, noticed that everybody that's a writer does that, and I'm, I'm sure you do that too. You definitely, you definitely right, do that. You know. Right from what you know. Yeah. Weird signal. So yeah, I mean, well, I write. Uh, I write. I... Sorry. So no, tragedy is a little no, bit ahead, of me. Ahead. Tragedy mm -hmm. is a little bit of me. She's a little bit of my wife. Uh, characters in her book are, you know people that I've met and, and how they interact and how they respond to things. And, you know, uh, just my almost 50 years on earth studying people and learning their behaviors, you know? <laughs> That's yeah, nice, I agree. Uh, they run the stories. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, back to the future, it was a wholesome movie for the family with positive, vibes and you know i mean I, we've kind of lost our way from that i think you know people find it too corny today and i think that's very kind of a very sad sentiment um if you find wholesomeness corny that means you've gone really dark and jaded mm. you know that's a shame eh, well hopefully um the next generation will actually make it a little bit better well, we oh, can God, all make it better, generation. right? Yeah. Well, I mean, it starts with every single person, no matter what generation you're in, right? You know, it's it's like uh, one of my favorite lines from a movie, Shawshank yeah. Redemption. Get busy living or get busy dying. You know, some people are just going through life in the motions. <laughs> They're not living. Uh, that's not for me. Yeah. That's why I'm working hard at these books. Is that you, Ryan, Facebook user? I think that's Ryan. Because Ryan is one of those those people I I I see that wholesomeness in that innocence. That's that's a good thing, you know. It's a positive thing. So I yeah, wonder if that's him. Well, he's probably not gonna say anything yet. Maybe he will. Oh, uh, Joe Ryan. Yeah. <laughs> Joe Ryan, I was right. <laughs> Sorry, I come from uh, old school where you call people by the last name. You know, it's like, like Robert, I don't call Robert, that's I call a, him Jim Corelli. That's all right. <laughs> that's all right. That's all right. Well, uh, thank you very much for being on the show, Phil. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. And thanks for letting me plug everything. But of course, but of course. Um, yeah, uh, I can't wait to see what uh, comes next for uh, for you. I really can't wait to see that. Yeah, Tragedy 4 coming August 16th. And much more exciting stuff coming up. Um, okay, this seems like a great place. Um to end the episode. Uh, thank you. Thanks, uh, everyone, for watching. Uh, you can join me tomorrow night as I give my review of Thor Love and Thunder and also my thoughts on the Batgirl movie situation, which is ever growing. Uh, but until then, I'm Ian Miller, uh, Trip with Our Comics, and have a good night, folks. Have a good one.